Howdy everyone, WarSarsa here, and today we're going to be looking at War Theater for the Nintendo Switch. Now I'm going to do something I usually don't do until the review portion, and just say right off the bat that for $10, I'm really impressed with the amount of hours you can get out of this game. I'm just going to leave it at that for now and stop myself before I get too ahead of myself and get on with explaining the game. There's a fair amount to cover, so let's get on with it. War Theater is a turn-based strategy game where as is standard with both TBS and RTS games, both sides have starter units, take over more territory while manufacturing more units, and try to take each other out to secure victory. Now before I cover game modes, I'm going to explain some of the elements of gameplay since all of the game modes come down to the same core gameplay. First there's the three base unit types, technically four. Infantry, Heavy, Air, and Water. The water can be kind of consider its own thing since it has one general strength and weakness. Infantry is strong against air but weak against heavy. Heavy is strong against infantry but weak against air. And air is strong against heavy but of course weak against infantry. Then there's the water units, the divers and submarines that are strong against all land units but weak against air units. Each unit type has a few variants, the higher up ones having a farther attack range, but less moves per turn. Your hero gets special attacks depending on which hero, for example, the Rat Mother here has Crippling Smog that slows enemy units for a short time, and Poison Gas that poisons nearby enemies and causes damage over time. There are also specials that lower enemy defense, or even heal allies. Outside of units, you have your buildings. The HQ, which there are two of, one that's yours and one that's your enemies, which is the place you're going to want to keep out of enemy hands that makes the three infantry units. Then you have the factories, which you start off with a few and have some neutral ones in the map so that both sides will race to claim first for an advantage. Then you've got city buildings, which provide you with gold each round. Now for buildings, here's the thing to note about how you capture them. If it's a neutral building, you simply have to move an infantry or hero unit over it and select capture and it'll become friendly. But if it's an enemy building, you'll have to hit capture and it'll become neutral, in which you'll have to hit capture again on your next turn to make it friendly. Now moving on from units and buildings, here's a big key gameplay element to your strategy. The terrain. You see you have the general land, which does nothing, basically dirt. Then you've got alternate terrains and places to move over, be it something simple like the road which increases mobility but lowers your defense by 10% while on it, forest which increases your defense by 50% but reduces mobility, and even surfaces that just straight up put you at a disadvantage like mud. These are just a few of the different environments that you'll encounter. Now let's talk about game modes. First we've got campaign, 7 of them actually, with the various heroes. You got the Rat Mother, Sister Robin, General Mort, Warhawk, Riven the Mad, Marina of Old, and the AA Team. Then you've got the free play mode, Skirmish, which lets you play on a map of your choice in one of three modes. Conquer, where you capture the enemy's HQ structure to win and destruction the enemy isn't necessary. Assassination, where you have to take out a targeted member of the opposing team while protecting your own. In Annihilation, where capturing structures isn't critical, you just have to completely wipe out the enemy force. After you've selected that, you'll get to select your perks in your hero so long as you have that hero unlocked, which I'll explain how to unlock more in just a minute, and whether you want player 1 and 2 to be an AI or human. If you have no heroes unlocked, the daily usable hero of course changes every day. Last you've got Multiplayer, which is played through the Mecho.net service. Don't worry, it's as simple as pressing one button and you've got your multiplayer access. You can create games, join games, or challenge friends. Multiplayer also lets you view your matches played, won, lost, and drawn, as well as your rating, ranking, and level. Alright, now that we've covered everything else, let's get to talking about how you unlock perks and heroes. In the arms dealer section, you'll have three sections. Perks, quests, and heroes. Obviously, you're going to have to take on quests before you can get anything from any of the other two. In the available quest section, you'll find various quests that also change every day. On my first day of playing, I noticed that they were mostly eliminate certain in units, such as infantry, air, and heavy. However, the next day I had different ones, such as producing a battalion of heavy units, bringing heavy units to bridges, generating revenue from cities, 
and the hero bounty that changes every day in which you'll have to defeat a certain hero. You can hold on to up to 8 quests. It was a cool thing being that while the qu available quest changes every day, the quests under your My Quest section will remain until you complete them. Once you've completed a quest, you'll have to go into My Quests, select the completed quest, and claim your reward. And of course, if you uh, go back on that same day into the available quests, you can do those quests over and over again. After you've done that, you'll have gained some gold, which can now be used in the Perks and Heroes sections. In your perks, you've got a variety of different types of perks, such as ones that increase damage or defense for all units, combinable with the various ones that do so for specific units as well, ones that increase attack damage or defense in certain terrains, health replenishments, monetary gain increases, further mobility on roads, and various other enhancements and abilities. You can equip up to 8 at a time, so there are plenty of ways to beef up your army. Finally, we've got the Heroes tab, which lets you purchase heroes with your gold, each of which, of course, has their own special abilities. So now that I've covered everything, let's get to the review. As I said at the beginning, I'm actually quite impressed with this game. You can get a lot of playtime out of this. I've been playing this frequently for a few days now, and there's still plenty left for me to do. So far, I've only played through the Rat Mother campaign, and while the story isn't exactly necessary for the experience, it's definitely enjoyable and adds to everything. Especially the design on the character models when they pop up on screen during dialogue at the beginning and end of each level. I've definitely taken a liking to Rat Mother, a character who does her best to protect her children and will take on anyone that tries to harm them. While we're talking about character models and characters, let's talk about graphics because there's actually a different few of them. First off, you may notice that the main menu world style looks familiar. That's because this is by the same people that made Plague Road, which shares the same art style. I never played too far into that game, but I like the design, so maybe I'll have to go back and finish it after this. Of course, you've got the standard in-game graphics, which will switch from a more top-up view of what looks like sprites to a more tilted and zoomed in 3D sort of view during dialogue, which lets you get an even better view of what's actually a decent looking world. Honestly, a lot of the maps kind of look the same, not in layout, but just overall visuals since each map consists of the same colored dirt terrain, but the various layouts keep the battle fresh. Of course, outside the edges of the map, you have what at first I thought was just a static flat image, but as it turns out, is just as real as everything else in the map. Personally, I like the map area style more, but I don't mind the outer world either. Last, we have the combat style. When you attack an enemy or an enemy attacks you, it switches over to a different screen where you get a side view of their models attacking each other, which while I usually skip it to save time, I think is a nice detail rather than just having the world models simply damage each other. The battles play out nicely. They can kind of go on for a long time, which can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your preference and how much time you have. For me, it just means you get even more out of the game, as it isn't just a bunch of quick battles that you zoom through and burn through all the game's content. Reason why battles tend to go on for so long is that your AI opponent will put up one hell of a fight. Just when you think you've got the upper hand and are capturing buildings closer to their base, at long last, a bit into the match, They'll zoom right over, destroy your units, and grab that building back from you, maybe even taking one of your own if they have enough in the area during that turn. If you heavily focus on one unit type, for example, if you're getting beat up by a lot of infantry units and decide to start stacking up on tanks or other heavy units, they'll start producing blimps which, remember, are air types and have the advantage over heavy units. Same goes for if you were to focus a lot on other types of units. They'll counteract by producing more enemies with advantages over those units. So these battles can get pretty tough, especially in later levels of the campaigns. I had a battle go on for a long time not even making it past the halfway point of the map because they really dug in good and their hero was a tank vehicle with a long attack range that would always one hit any units I tried to approach with or sneak around with. So I eventually had to call it a draw. Of course, as you unlock more perks and equip them, battle should be easier for you and thus go a little faster, but I wouldn't go assuming that you'll just zoom through a battle because you won't. Moving on to music, there isn't much to talk about. You've got the menu music, which I think is awesome, and then when you go to battle, you've pretty much got the same track that will play throughout the whole battle. 
It isn't obnoxious or anything, and it's not bad, so it's never bothered me. Of course, you've got other audio cues signaling when it's your turn or the enemy's turn. Sound design is pretty good as well and really helps with the engagement, but there's nothing in particular that needs addressing. In conclusion, again, there is a lot of game for your $10 in this surprisingly well-made budget game. There are so many battles between the campaigns which will keep you occupied for a long time just by themselves, to the endless skirmishes you can have, plus all the quests you can take on that will help you upgrade your army and change things up, keeping it fresh. Hell, I'll say that the first day I had this, I basically played it all day long, and I'm still barely through the game. I haven't had a good chance to play any new TBS games in a long time, so this was a welcoming game for me. Now I know this will be a great game to have on any platform you can get it on, but this also taking advantage of the Switch's portability makes this an awesome game to be able to play anywhere. It works well playing it as a full-fledged console game and a portable game, made further apparent by the fact that this game is also on the Vita, which honestly if it weren't for mine being broken, I'd consider getting it on there as well since the Vita is a great handheld. Anyway, I hope this review has been helpful and if you do decide to get this game, enjoy and maybe i'll see you on the battlefield i'd like to thank arcade distillery for sending me a review key for this game this is war on the game clips channel and i'm out